Hello, welcome to Bloke on the Range. I'm very pleased to be able to bring you more content with this, the uh, Unicorn Factory Semi-Auto L85A1 rifle, aka SA80, uh, that we filmed a while back. Now, uh, this particular one, as a reminder, was built as a semi-auto, and uh, there is a blanking plate there where the selector would normally go. Uh, this particular one was made in Nottingham in 1989, and uh, it's found its way to Switzerland somehow back in the day and I'm very grateful to its owner who is off camera and wishes to remain anonymous for his gracious permission to uh, use it and film it. Now this particular one uh, is an L85A1. There is no L85 with nothing after it. As a little digression British uh, designation numbers start at A1. There's no A0. There's no blank. Um, this one did not have any of the A1 program upgrades so we've still got the unprotected um, um, magazine release which can bump on your gear and drop a full mag and how they didn't discover that in trials I just don't know. Uh, the rubber of the butt plate had petrified and uh, for the eagle-eyed amongst you this has actually been replaced with an LSW one. The owner still has the original. Now this is currently set up for infantry use so it's got the four power scope, the SUSAT sight unit small arms trilux uh, but for non-infantry use and for emergencies they were actually issued with a, uh, a set of iron sights. Now what I thought we'd do today is swap the SUSA over for the iron sights and uh, try it out, see how well it, uh, see how well it goes. And what I'll do is I will uh, show you how this changes over. We'll talk about it a bit. Um, I will then bore sight it through the barrel because I don't have a collimator here. Uh, its owner does not have one, they're not a common piece of kit and we'll go through the 2003 PAM version of the, uh, of the zeroing exercise and once we're happily zeroed we will take it out to 300 meters and see how we go with it. Right, so in this light it's kind of difficult to see what I'm doing but anyway, here we go, let us try our best. So, the SUSA is held on by two clamping screws and then there's a positioning pin there that is actuated by that little flappy lever. So to get it off what we do is we just loosen these thumb screws we open the front cover we press up on the lever and then we can just pop it off like that and uh, as a reminder for those who don't want to go and watch the old video um, it's got a vertical pointer, let's just see if we can see it there. Comes up from the bottom, there's an emergency battle sight on top. The adjustment is on the mount and relies on a stiff spring. The uh, ballistic drop compensation drum is here. Whether that returns to zero or not always is an open question. And the adjustments for windage are here and have clamping nuts so it involves, it's quite involved. Uh, they're often set up wrong, this one was when I got it and uh, elevation is zeroed using this part of the combi tool on here to uh, move it up and down. The iron sights on the other hand, it's a two position flip, it's marked for 200 meters but used up to 300, there's not much drop between 200 and 300 and then a big ghost ring for low light use on the front sight, you can't really see it in there, but you see a little dot, there's a tiny little tritium element in there for use with the, the low light sight. And then we've got adjustment here, and we use that part of the combi tool, push it in and we can push the point of impact down or up, like so it's easier with it on the rifle and not having a camera in your face. So, what we're going to do to fit this is, instead of a, a little plunger, what you've got here is a screw that has to be indexed, and there are three possible attachment points to give eye relief, and you want at least 25 millimeters eye relief. Um, now, I shot back in the day, I shot the Cadet GP rifle quite, uh, quite often in competition, and that had a different rear sight. It's otherwise the same system, but there was no tritium element um, and the L position flip had a battle sight that was sort of more squared off um, and then 
in theory, um, I think it was 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 meters on a little turny wheel there, but I'm, we weren't convinced that they actually did anything. So what I'm gonna do is put this on the mid position. Um, you might be thinking, well, the sight radius is gonna be different depending on which point that's in, and you'd be right, it varies between 290 and 320 millimeters. Not that makes much of a difference. Where are you? Here we are. In case it seems like I'm faffing a lot, I'm actually reaching around the camera tripod. I think people don't always appreciate actually how difficult this sometimes is to manipulate things um, while working with the camera in your face. So, I mean, this has to be done in sort of quarter turns as well, which is a complete pain in the backside. Now, um, these were non-infantry initially. Uh, I believe now SUSATs are given to far more people. Little clamp screws here that we also do up with this. This combi tool is actually pretty well designed. Um, now, in each infantry section, in the uh, the light support weapon, the L86A1 light support weapon um, kit, there were there was a um, a set of iron sights for either replacing it on the light support weapon or any uh, any rifles that carked it, basically. So we need to take this right out. This, this set screw, it is captive because on here we have a little notch and then we try and get it round close the top cover and then we tighten it up like so And there we have it. So while I've got this all set up like this, just quickly go over the rifle again. So we've got a gas plug that is adjustable between normal excess gas and off for launching rifle grenades. And that is actuated with this part of the tool. So if you get a gas stoppage, you've got to start faffing with your combi tool and you can do it like that. Also used for taking it out. Up rod, gas cylinder, gas piston in there. And then I will show you the rest in the range where there'll be more noise when I uh, take it apart further so that I can ball sight it. Okay, so as a reminder, bolt goes forward. We've got one pin here that comes out, it should be kept if it isn't. If you pull it all the way across, it releases everything. It's got an intermediate position to hold the, uh, uh, the spring captive. We've got the other pin here. If we push it out. Stiff. Needed a bit of persuasion. And then that comes off, keeping your hand over the back, just in case you want to play spring mortar. Then we pull that out and it shouldn't come out, but they often do. Guide rods, recoil spring, then whoosh, that just pops out and looks suspiciously like an AR-18 but with a really long bolt travel. So what I'm going to do now is look through the barrel and look through the sights at a point out in the 300 metre thing, one of the numbers or something like that, whatever I can consistently line it up against and then try and align the sights to close enough to where the uh, uh, the barrel is pointing. In fact, what I want what I want the barrel to do is point slightly higher than the sights at, at 300 to compensate for drop. So, let's try that. A little later. So I'm actually looking at the flag, the wind flag. Um, it's looking good for line elevation. In fact, that's looking pretty good already. We shall see when we uh, actually aim it at the target. So let's reassemble it now. So bolt the carrier with the bolt forward. Go in there like that. Cocking handle goes in. How round is it? That way round like that. That runs forward. Go 
try to go in like that and then we make it captive just with that into the first notch. Just okay. yeah, enough. Well lubed from last time. This then hooks in at the front like so. And then goes in like that. Pin goes all the way across. That pin goes through. And then we can hook it back. So this is the point where I'm going to have to admit to making some concessions. We don't have a figure 11 target. We just got a, a Swiss 50 meter pistol figure target. Um, I should have a figure 11 be aiming at the middle of it. In fact, all I will do is I will aim just off the bottom of the normal pistol target. I don't have any 62 grand ammunition because I only found out that I would have access to this rifle a couple of days ago. I haven't had time to get any 62, but we have some excellent tune made Gecko 55 grain. And uh, I'm going to run one of my 30 round USGI mags. This one's a Brannells one. So what we're going to do, go through the, uh, the zeroing practice, which was shot prone magazine supported. Uh, now there were people commenting under the earlier video uh, about that, saying that that was, that that was wrong. You're not supposed to rest the magazine on the, uh, on the ground. Well, um, I put a link to a PDF version of the 2003 pamphlet uh, in the description below so you can go and uh, check that out for yourself and i'm doing it according to the pamphlet you shoot 20 rounds in five round groups standing up and relaxing between and this is to try and even out shooter error and what we're looking for is a uh, minimum standard <laughs> of 200 millimeters extreme spread for those uh, 20 rounds and we will adjust the sights so that we are the, 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 the mean point of impact is within 50 millimeters in any direction of 100 millimeters above the point of aim with the sight set at 200 and shooting at 100. So it should be 100 millimeters high, four inches, uh, with a tolerance of 50 millimeters, two inches, and each click is approximately 50 millimeters. So let us see how we get on. What I will do is I'll shoot the first few rounds and then check through the scope to see where they're going because last time we had a bit of a nightmare because the first rounds didn't hit the target at all. Anyway, here we go. Now I'll try to do this as doctrinally as possible. It's been a long time. Sorry if I make any errors. So, load, safety catch. There is no change lever. Magazine on. Push it, check it, don't hit it. Ready, safety catch, non-existent change lever. Oh, forward assist. So, test and adjust position. So, magazine rested position is monopoding it off the magazine. You end up splaying your elbows like that. Check my alignment. Close my eyes, breathe in, breathe out. Open my eyes, where am I? Ah, oh, I'm bang on. So I don't need to do the, uh, the hip shuffle. Let's just go. We appear to be on the board, but they're not very close together. Check the moment, come on. So, because I've got to stand up, Range rules I'll unload. Right, they are actually quite close together. Uh, they're off to the left, but what I'll do is I'll go through the whole 20 rounds according to doctrine, and then we'll go down to the targets, take a look, make the sight adjustments down there, and uh, come back and do a check group. So, I'm going to stand up and relax. Back down again. Safe to catch, non existent change. Forward assist. Oh. 
safety catch, magazine off. Check, check, check. Aim shot, safe direction, and go back to Swiss range rules, so locked open. Right, let's go down there and have a look. Okay, so uh, here we are at the target. I initially thought that was a shot, but it wasn't. So the group was forming here, and that's actually not a bad group. Now the minimum standard is um, 200 millimeters, and uh, these rings just so happen to be 50 millimeters each. So uh, our extreme spread is gonna be basically that one to that one, or maybe that one to that one. I think it's gonna make a lot of difference. Uh, yeah, that one. So 50, 100, about 130, uh, possible 200 millimeters minimum standard. So that's all right. Um, and actually with a sight radius that short, I'm aiming here, focusing on the front sight, as you should, this thing kind of turns into just a, a fuzzy blur. In the middle of a figure 11 probably isn't so bad because you've just got this big fuzzy camouflage blur you can aim at. So what we're wanting is a point of impact that is 100 millimeters above the point of aim, so 50, 100 there. Um, and actually we're gonna be shooting at 300, not 200. Um, I think our mean point of impact is about there which is less than a whole click, less than 50 millimeters up anyway. It's about half a click, so we'll leave the elevation, but the windage, we're gonna wind across one, two, three, and then go fire a check group. So let's do that. So to adjust the windage, we take that part of the combi tool. Point of impact going left is that way, so we want to come three clicks the other way. One, two, three and then patch out and go back to the firing point. Okay, so fire a five round check group, and I'll just view it through the scope, I'll film it later. I'm actually off to the left this time. Move my hips a little. Okay. Ah, not a very good group. Probably rushing and sweating from going back and forth to the, to the targets. We have actually limited filming time. Anyway, what I think I'm gonna do is move it another, where's my combi tool? Click right, and then we'll take it up to 300. We're not gonna fire another check group. Oops, that's just wasting time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is at 300 on the electronic targets and uh, to make it easy to aim at, I've taken one of the, the precision targets. Uh, the aiming mark is 30 centimeters wide, so I'm gonna to want to come up. Let's try two clicks up. Uh, can't see in this light. Up. Uh, so that hopefully aiming at the bottom will get in the middle. We shall see where it goes and we can adjust the sights on the basis of the output of the target box. Well, hey, oh, that last one was a bit, I, I, I pushed, the, uh, pushed the front sight into the black. So we're going to have another right. And at this range, it's 150 millimeters, so six inches per click.
Well, that's not bad at all. Come on back. That's actually the first and any first stoppage we've had with it so far today. Um, that's not bad at all. Um, that brings back memories because. Well, I shot the L98A1, the hand-operated version, an awful lot in competition, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and we always had the problem with focusing on the sight and that not giving a good sight picture. I mean, we shot at tin hat targets, so they're only half an aiming mark, only the top half. Um, but that is pretty cool. Shall we do a comparison with my M16A1? I think we should. So the first thing I notice is that this is lighter and better balanced. It's not as horribly top heavy um so yeah just put it out of the way for a minute last time i shot this rifle with this ammo i noticed i was about two minutes of angle low which on this is just two clicks uh the 50 millimeter click on the other is about one and three quarters of angle. so let's go up two clicks and uh start that same thing i'm gonna mag rest So, here we go. <laughs> Quick size adjustment later. Another quick size adjustment. Well, with a longer sight radius, you certainly get much better definition. You're focusing on the front sight, uh, you get much better definition seeing the target. Anyway, I'm gonna put the last five rounds out of this box through the SA-80 because I can shoot my M16A1 whenever I like. But I can't shoot that SA-80 aside from when its owner brings it along. Well, that's more than adequately accurate and actually surprised me how well it performs at 300 off the iron sights. I had not expected groups quite as good as that. So that's actually uh, a pleasant surprise. Now, one thing, shooting, shooting the two side by side, the trigger on this is actually better, surprisingly, um, but the recoil characteristics are quite different. The, uh, the M16, despite being lighter, has much less muzzle flip because it's, it's an absolutely inline action, inline design. All the moving weight is on the barrel axis, whereas this, because a lot of the moving weight is above the barrel axis, it goes to rocks. It rocks quite a lot, particularly when put on the, uh, on the magazine. I think actually I've got some more, it's not the same ammo, but it's a Fiocchi. Um, before I take this apart and clean it, what I think I'm going to do is just shoot it prone unsupported and see what it can do. Okay, Fiocchi ammo. Might not have the same point of impact. Oh, by the way, the, the aiming mark on the target is uh, 60 centimeters, which is about two feet across. So if you can consistently hit in that, 
it's going to be militarily more than effective. Ah, 38. So that didn't register because I wasn't far enough forward for the shockwave to pick it up. There we go. Well, aside from one cheeky one that crept off the bottom there, that's pretty good. And one thing I do like about this is I can get my finger around the end of the stock like that. It's just the perfect length. Right, should we put the SUSAT back on? Okay, so reverse of the widget before. We loosen off those two clamping screws. And this is in fact described in the manual as a carry handle. So it is legit, but I wouldn't carry it by the handle because that's what's giving you zero. And then unscrew this a mile. Soon after. Then this goes on. First position, second position. You push it forward, it means it won't slide under the first bit of recoil. Tighten the clamping screws on the left. Deal with the front sight. Now last time we shot this with 62 grain Fiocchi, so we might have to make an adjustment, but we shall see how it goes and I'll just shoot it off my elbows again. Ah, gotta be right. Gotta be forward. That's low. Ah, right next to each other. Okay. So up two notches. You can't really see the notches while you're doing this. So. Up a little more. Just a touch more. I'm having too much fun with this. Ah, gone too far now. Uh, back down just a touch.
Another good shot. Interesting. Well, I left. Yeah, actually, I was fine. Where are we? Oops. Okay, what's happening here is, because it's 55 grain ammo, it's probably not giving it quite enough oomph to come all the way back and uh, hook up. Anyway, yeah, I used the wrong hand, sorry. Uh, right, so there we go. I think that's an interesting demonstration that the uh, SUSAT is definitely very much a force multiplier. For a start, you can actually see what you're shooting at, which you can't necessarily do so well with the irons. Um, that was an awful lot of fun. Thanks again to the owner of this rifle. Um, I hope that was at least vaguely interesting for you lot at home. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to our patrons who helped to pay for things like money and keep us chugging along. Thank you so much and uh, see you again sometime. Bye.